Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to extend the Node.js application we built in video 1 so that instead of just returning that string to the browser we're going to deploy a, a web app that will re render an HTML web page um, so as you can see then from there we can start to build out something more useful and build our application before I begin um, I just wanted to show you a, a quick trick um, if you remember in the first video uh, we went and manually configured our dependencies because we had tools like Express doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Well, it's possible to make it so Node automatically configures those dependencies. Um, to do that, if you type in uh, sudo npm install express, which is the command to install express, and then if you run minus minus save. Now, what this will do is instead of just going and installing express on my system, um, it'll also tell my app um, that I want this to be registered as a dependency in package.json. So I'm going to execute that. I'll ask for my password. There we go. So that's installed now and it should have added that dependency to our application. So if I go back to dependencies, you can see it's automatically added express and this version number. Uh, so I didn't write that, it's done that for me. So if you've got an app with multiple dependencies, that dash dash save command can really speed things up for you. Okay, let's get right into it. So this is our app.js file that you may remember from uh, previously. Um, as you can see, it just returns there on line 8, hello from the GDG hackathon. Um, in a minute, we're going to make some tweaks to this to make it render an HTML web page. Um, but first, we need to build that HTML web page. So I'm going to uh, right-click on this folder here, new file, and I'm going to call it index.htm. Uh, that's just because index is the common practice name for the first page that your website loads. Okay, and then hit enter. So that's created this file for me, um, which I'm going to go ahead and write some HTML in. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is uh, tell my browser that what's coming is HTML. So we can do that using the HTML tags. Uh, and then we've got two concepts within HTML. Um, the first is a head, um, which obviously goes and contains all of the stuff at the top of your page. So that could be where you load your JavaScript, where you load your CSS files for styling. Um, so we've got a head there. You've also got a body too. And the body is obviously where your um, main content for your web page will sit. Um, so there are lots of parameters we can set in the head. Uh, the first one, the one that we're just going to set for this quick demo, uh, is the title. Uh, and this will load at the top of the web page in the tab, so people can see just by glancing at their tabs what it is um, that that tab contains. So I'm going to put a GCP tutorial in there. Um, and then we want some content in the body. Um, there is lots of documentation on stuff that you can add to websites uh, on the W3Schools website. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. Um, but for things like headings, there's the H1 tag, so we'll have one of those. And we can say GCP node, GCP node tutorials. And then if we go and have P, which is for paragraph, and in this paragraph we can just put... some basic text so that some content loads on the page when we run this app. Okay, so that's great. So we've built our first HTML page, but we now need to tell Node.js through our app.js file that instead of returning that string, what it should do is load this um, file and return this file to the browser. So if we go back to uh, app.js, um, this should look really familiar to you guys um, as you wrote this code in the last video. Um, but if we go to this line, so this line here, line 8, is where we were returning that string to the browser. This is the bit that we want to convert. Um, and conveniently, if we take this back as far as send, Node and Express have got a method that will do this for us. So it's a really simple change to our app to make it do something much better. Uh, and the method is send file, um, which makes a lot of sense. So instead of just sending that string now with the send method, what we're going to do is send a file. Um, and we need to give it a path. 
Now you could just write which index.htm, which is of course our file name, um, but that won't work out of the box. So when you, um, when you run this in a browser, um, it needs the full path to index.htm, and of course that's not the full path. You need to add in, um, you need to tell Node that you want it to look in the current directory for it. So to do that, you can type in underscore underscore dirname, which tells Node to get its current directory, and then add to that string with a plus index.htm. So what will happen now when we go to forward slash um, forward slash on our website, um, we will return 200, so we let the browser know that everything's okay, and then also send that file. So whatever's in our current directory, um, plus that little bit at the end, the forward slash index.htm. So it should return our index page um, to the browser. Okay, so just going to go ahead and save this, and then if we go back to our command line and we type in node app.js, um, so now that started our web app and it's listening on port 8080. So if on my browser uh, up here I go to localhost 8080, you can see that it's now loading that HTML content. So instead of just having a string, we've got some styling to it. We've got a title there, and there's some paragraph for our main body. And also at the very top, you can see in the URL tab, it recognizes um, that this is the GCP tutorial. So at a glance, users can see exactly what your web page does. Okay, just gonna close that, and then quit this. Great, so that's all running, that's all working fine in our local browser. Now we need to make sure uh, that we get that um, up and running in the cloud. So to do that, uh, if you remember the command from the last video, gcloud um, config set project, and then the name of your project, so this is um, the GCP node, node tutorials project, there we go, so that's all configured. Um, that then tells your um, G Cloud SDK installed on your local system that the project um, in the Google Cloud Platform Online up in the cloud that it wants to connect to is called GCP Cloud Tutorials, so that then connects the two dots. And then basically what I want to do um, is just the same in the last video, is tell my local app um, to deploy itself to the website. Now to do that you type in G Cloud app deploy and hit enter it'll ask you if you're happy to continue of course you are um, and then you just wait for this to uh, to finish it'll it'll take a minute to deploy again okay so that'll have finished now so if we navigate back to our web browser and then go to that URL which is of course gcp node dot appspot com if we go there, look, we can see the online version of the app is um, rendering the HTML content. So we can see that our title that we said is appearing, and we've got our first heading and some paragraph for some basic text. So you can see from there that actually what you're doing now by serving HTML content is that you can quickly scale your app so that you're doing something much more useful than just returning a string to the browser. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, again, I'll put a link in the video description to the W3Schools documentation where there's lots more information on uh, HTML and things like that. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll incorporate some styling to our website to make it look a bit prettier than it currently does, and we'll look to add some functionality as well so there's more stuff that users can do. Just before I go, I wanted to give you a quick tour of the uh, GCP console. So if you go to cloud.google.com, this should be your landing page. From here, if you click on console, it'll load your personal uh, Google Cloud Platform console where you can select this uh, drop down and it'll list all the projects that you've currently got deployed. But I think the most interesting thing here is under resources, if you select compute engine, it'll load you a time graph of uh, your virtual machine instances. So these are actual servers that you've got running your application in the cloud. Um, and if we see along here now, there's this spike here. Um, this spike is caused by, um, and look, it tells you the number of virtual CPUs you're using. This spike is caused by the deploy command because when you ask to deploy your new version of the app, what's happening under the covers is Google Cloud Platform is spinning up a new instance of the application while your previous one exists. 
so that user service isn't disrupted. And then once your app is running and stood up correctly in the new virtual machines with your new code, so your new fancy HTML code, uh, then it turns off the previous ones. But there's a CPU intensive spike there where it requires a bit more compute resource to make that happen. Okay, thanks for watching.